What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Logo and today we're going to be yes, once again working with the timer app, but we're going to actually be formatting it so that not only will it work for, you know, the way that we handle our time, but it will work, you know, for all supported languages and their and the way that they construct their time. So what we want to do is and let's take a look at it. Right now, we have the whole entire padding, you know, it's saying 0405 and we have the milliseconds showing. Now we're going to format the uh the timer to actually um, you know, like I said, work for all the different countries that, you know, iPhone essentially supports. So we're going to go ahead and do that. The only downside about what we're about to accomplish is that we're no longer going to have the milliseconds, which I honestly don't feel like it's too big of a deal, but um, we're going to be able to display the hours, the minutes and the seconds um, correctly for every single country that that supports the iPhone. So let's go ahead and jump into it. But before we jump into it, I just want to say, make sure that you check out kiloloco.com. You know, I have um, a couple of courses up and I also have the all access membership pass, as you can see, currently available for $8 a month, which is quite the deal. And you also get a, um, access to the Slack community. So if you ever have a question, you guys just reach out to me, baby. Oh yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial now, now that I got the little plug in. All right, so as you can see, this is the code that we left off with. If you want the starter project, you can go ahead and go in the, uh, the description and go ahead and um, go to the link, download it. It's all there for free. And as you can see, this is where we're handling all of our label formatting. Now, last time we did, uh, we formatted our label using string formatting, and we have it right here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually replace this with something that's more uh, internationally accepted. So let's go ahead and comment this out. And let's go ahead and jump into what's going to save us a lot of pain and frustration, especially if we're planning on making a timer app that is available to users around the world. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna actually want to come up with a date component formatter. So let's go ahead and create that right now. All right, so if you've ever worked with date formatter, this is very similar to uh, a, a regular date formatter, except it, it's specifically for the date, uh, the, the components. So like the, the minutes, the hours, the days, the, the days of the week, the months, all that other stuff, all, all those individual components can actually be formatted. So what we want to do is we want to tell our formatter, hey, there's a couple of things that we want. We want to be able to show the seconds. We want to be able to show minutes. We want to show hours. We want to show a padding between, you know, if if it's the first second, it should be zero one. It shouldn't just be one. Um, so there's a couple of different configurations that we're going to add in right now. So let's just go ahead and add in uh, add those in, and then we'll come back and talk about them. All right. So as you can see, there's a couple of different options that we decided to go for with the date components formatter. Now, uh, first off, we have the unit style. Now we selected positional because this is going to actually say um, that we want it to be formatted kind of like a time. We don't want it to be formatted saying specifically um, what whichever units that we're going to be calculating. We don't want it to say, you know, M for minute or H for hour or things like that. We want it to kind of be um, formatted just like like a time. So that's that's what the unit style is. The allowed units is essentially saying, OK, which which what which of these units are we planning on um, displaying? Well, we also want to show minutes. We want to show seconds and we also want to show hours. So we're going to include all three of those in inside of this allowed units. Uh, lastly, I'm just saying for the zero formatting behavior, I want to have padding or pad. And this is, this is essentially going to give us the behavior that we want that I stated where there's going to be a zero before a single digit number. It's not going to just start off at that single digit number because then it just looked kind of, look kind of weird. Yeah, right. So once we have all that, all we need to do is set our label dot text to the string that's being formatted. Uh, or our duration that's being formatted um, into a string with all of this, um, all of these options set. So let's go ahead and add that right now. 
All right, so as you can see, all we need to do is just say formatter dot string from, and then we pass in whatever time interval uh, uh, interval that we want. In this case, we want to say the duration. So let's go ahead and run that, and let's see what it looks like now. All right, and because this has been bugging me for the past couple of videos, I'm just going to go back over, and I'm going to we're going to modify the storyboard just real quick, just because I don't like to see that single zero. I think it should be formatted the proper way just so that we start off with something correct. So I'm going to just add that in really quickly. All right. So as you can see, I set it up just so that we have the hour, we have the seconds and we have the, um, the, we have the minutes the, and the seconds, right? So we only need one position for the hours. We don't need to go all crazy because we're not going to have anything um, in front of it. So that's fine with a single digit. And then we're going to have double digits for the minutes and for the seconds. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's see what it looks like. All right. So now looking a little bit better and we're just going to press play and let's take a look. And as you can see, it starts off at seconds and, um, you know, we're just counting up and we're keeping double. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I disable this pause button just so that we can see as the time goes up, what it looks like. So let's jump back over to the view controller. We're going to break our app a little bit just to test it, just to test it, just to test it. Oh yeah. So the way that we break our app is that we just say on, and we're just going to say true toggle timer on and we're just going to say true that'll break our app that's going to stop it from doing the pausing we're still going to be showing the play button then the pause button then the play button but if you watch the first video you will actually know that this is going to cause the app to go pretty crazy right now so we see that look at that so much better isn't it isn't it cool how how crazy it flips out so as you can see it's jumping up and it's starting to to format in the correct way that we would expect all right and here it comes and happy new year see it's, it's working so as you can see as the timer would go up you would actually see that it's formatting the the label correctly and we're going to just have the hours go up um, properly the minutes go up properly and obviously the seconds go up now let's just go back over to our app we're going to unbreak it we just want to make sure that we're going back to normal and yeah so that's all i wanted to show you guys um, was just the date components formatter real quick. Um, it's just very important that when you're working with dates that you are always considering other countries because um, when you release your app, I think by default, it, it, it does go out to all the other countries. So if you're releasing your app and it's working with dates, it's always important to take the, the locale into consideration. And when you're working with the, the date components formatter, it's gonna automatically uh, handle the locale for you. It's gonna use the user's current locale for you. And it's gonna um, uh, format that information properly whereas if we were to continue to just follow this method where we're just going to be using a string to format it ourselves we could run into an error um, we could be displaying it incorrectly for the user and that could mean um, some very different things for that person um, in in that other country so just keep that in mind um, but that's going to be all for today guys just another sh simple short little video and um, if you guys have any topics that you want covered make sure you leave a comment below and I will try to get, uh, I'll, I'll add that to the list, but I'll try to get to it soon as well. So thanks for stopping by and make sure that you guys go out there and you keep coding passionately.